Every day we see the sun rises above the horizon, moves across the sky, and then we have sunset, and then we have the night. The stars and the sun don't move this fast. What you are experiencing is rotation of the Earth around itself. So our planet is rotating around itself approximately every 24 hours. So this is rotation axis and it means we have rotation like this. There are many consequences. One interesting result is this axis is aligned with one star here, which is far away. And what it means, it means this star will not move around. It looks like this star is fixed in the sky. What makes this picture more confusing is that everything depends on our location. So let's say we are here. For this person right now it's night. So we can't see the sun, it's night, but we also can't see anything below our horizon. So in this case our horizon is like this. We can't see anything below this line. So for example this person never will see this star here. It's always Below horizon even though there is rotation you see this person will move around like this and it's always above this line okay for this person what we see looking this side is something like this we have a horizon we can't see anything below this line and this is polaris and it looks like stars are rotating around polars. Okay, this is for this person here. If I change my location to a different point, let's say I, I move here. Looking from this point, this is my horizon. So I will see everything about this line. But again, it's a little more confusing because there is rotation. A few hours later, I will have different point of view. But no matter what happens, there are three parts of the sky. So let's say this person, okay? This person is moving around and if you follow this person you will see there is one part that's always above horizon second section is more dynamic this person sees this part but 12 hours later we can't see anything another part of the sky for this person is always below the horizon so for this person one part of the sky is always above the horizon it's always visible just be careful we can't see stars daylight another part for this person again another section is a changing part of the sky sometimes we'll see that part sometimes we can't see and the third part is, we can't see that part. Okay. So this part is called never sets because it's always above the horizon. And this part is called never rises because it's always below the horizon. But it will be different for another person at a different location. So for example, for this person, this part is always above horizon and this person can't see this part of the sky. Okay? So it's 
confusing picture because everything depends on time and your location. There is a second motion and that's annual rotation. So every 365 days we have one rotation around the sun. So it looks like the sun is moving in the sky every one year. Okay? It's not daily motion. In order to explain what we see in the sky, we use a slightly different picture. In this picture, which is not a real universe, we put the earth at the center and everything in the sky is projected on imaginary sphere. We call it the sky. Okay? So this is the earth at the center and this is the sky and basically we ignore distances. So we may have stars around here, we just project them at this point. We may have stars closer than this distance, we project them outside. So this is another star, okay? So this is our three-dimensional imaginary sphere in the sky. Okay, now let's add rotation axis. So this is rotation axis, north and south. For North Pole, we have Polaris and other stars. And Earth rotates like this. But in this picture, because this is fixed, it looks like the stars are rotating like this. So stars are orbiting here and there's is fixed. Our next step is to use a coordinate system. For coordinate system we use something similar to Earth. On Earth, we use latitude and longitude to find any point. We need two numbers. And the same idea for the sky, we need two numbers. First number is called declination. So let's start from declination, DEC. For declination, we need a reference point. For reference point, our planet has equator, we continue the equator and we have similar circle in the sky. So this is sky equator and we use this circle as a reference point for declination. So declination lines are like this. Okay. We start from zero. So this is zero and we go up here, which is positive 90. And we go down here, which is negative 90. Okay, so 0, 10, 20, whatever, from 0 to positive 90 and from 0 to negative 90. This is declination. But declination is not enough. 
So for example, if I say I have one star at 60 degrees in the inclination, so 60 degrees uh, with respect to the equator, I will go around here. So this is 60 degrees, but everything around here is 60 degrees. So I need a second number. Second number is called right ascension. And again, we need a reference point for right ascension. If you remember from our previous picture, this is rotation axis and the sun was somewhere around here. But we know sun is at the center, Earth is orbiting around the sun every 365 days. So it means it looks like sun will move around a circle every one year. So this is a second circle. Okay, so it looks like sun is moving around this line. This is called ecliptic, okay? But you remember there is an angle. Earth is slightly tilted with respect to the sun. This angle is around 23.5 degrees. So it means there is an angle between equator and ecliptic and if we follow our uh, triangles you will see this is the same angle so there is 23.5 degrees between ecliptic and equator okay another result is these two circles will cut each other at two points this point here and this point here. These points are called equinox. Equinoxes are two points. What's interesting, one equinox is the beginning of spring. So this is called a spring equinox. Another one is the beginning of the fall. So this is fall equinox. So spring equinox and fall equinox. There are two other points. One is here, another one is here. These two points are the maximum distance between ecliptic and equator. And these are called solstices. This one is summer solstice and this one is winter solstice. And there is a reason because this is the season we see the sun here. So this is spring equinox, beginning of spring, then sun moves here. This is the beginning of summer, moves here. This is beginning of fall, moves here, this is beginning of winter, and moving around. So this is one year rotation of the sun. Now we have more complete picture. We use spring equinox as a reference point for right ascension. And right ascensions are straight, so basically they go like this. Okay. So these are right ascensions. If you remember declinations and right ascensions. For right ascension, we don't use degrees. We use hours and minutes. 
So one rotation here is 24 hours. So we do 0, 2, 24. 24 is just 0. So 0 hour, 1 hour, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on and so forth. And we also have a smaller fraction. So for example, 1 third of an hour is 20 minutes. Okay, in summary, we have two coordinate numbers, declination and right ascension. Declinations are measured with respect to equator. This is equator and declination go from zero to positive 90 at north and from zero to negative 90 itself. Second number is right ascensions. Right ascensions are measured with respect to equinox and we use hours and minutes to uh, to find right ascensions. It's between 0 and 24 hours. We also use smaller fractions, minutes and seconds. So for example, let's say we are looking for this star. So for this star, we read the collation lines with respect to equator and let's say it is 60 degrees. And for right ascensions, we use hours and minutes. So this is star is here. This is our reference point. Let's say one, two, three, four, five hours. So this is five hours. So this is star is at declination 60 degrees and right ascension five hours. Uh, what about units? So for declination, we are using degrees, but to be more accurate, we can go up to arc minutes and arc seconds. So one arc minute is one sixtieth of a degree. So basically, let's say this is one degree. If you divide this one degree in 60 small unit each one of them is one arc minute and if you take one of those small arc minutes and divide by 60 you have arc seconds so these are extremely small units so for example for declination you can say I have minus 10 degrees 12 minutes and 20 seconds. For right ascension, we use hours, minutes, and seconds. So, for example, I can say I have one object at 2 hours, 10 minutes, and 15 seconds. One important uh, point is that altitude is not declination. If you have a question about altitude, it's basically the angle between horizon and the object. So for example, let's say this is the star. And for this star, altitude is from here to here. Okay, and the main difference is altitude is local coordinate. It will change. So for example, if this is star moving in the sky compared to the horizon, you have one altitude here, then you have increasing altitude, the highest altitude, and it will go down. And remember, declination is different. Declination is a coordinate number, and that's a universal number. It's fixed.